Hey, this is Corey from Wolfpack Woodcraft, and today we're going to be talking about the difference between a push cut saw and a pull cut saw. Now, this is a silky saw, this is a Baco Laplander. The Baco Laplander actually pushes on the or cuts on the push and the pull, so this one's a little bit different. But the silky is something that I've been using for a long time now, and when I first got this saw, everybody had to tell me, remember it cuts on the pull, not the push. Cuts on the pull, not the push. It cuts on the pull, not the push. And I was like, okay, I get it. But I didn't get it. I didn't get it at all. I didn't understand how it was going to be different because you're applying the same motion. You're doing the same thing. It's just indifferent of my baco. It's going to cut one way and not the other. So as I am sawing, it's only going to be cutting half as much in my mind anyway. But it turns out there's a giant difference. And so for those of you that don't know, the Japanese pull saws cut on the pull stroke where a western style or American style saws cut on the push stroke. And so the difference being is in a Japanese style saw you are going to apply pressure on the pull and zero pressure on the push. Where a western style saw is completely opposite. You're going to apply pressure on the push and zero on the pull. So if you use a pull saw or a Japanese pull saw as a western style saw and you apply pressure on the push and none on the pull, you're getting nowhere fast, okay? On the other hand, if you use a Japanese pull saw as a western style and you apply pressure at the push and not the pull, again, you're getting nowhere fast. You're not going to be cutting through that wood efficiently at all. And so you need to understand the difference between the two and understand which one you have. Is this cutting on the pull or is it cutting on the push? And so that is the one big difference. The second big difference is the what it's capable of, what it needs to be capable of. A western style saw, when you start, you start with all of your force at the tip and work your way to the handle. So that tip needs to be thick, robust, built to be able to withstand that pressure of being pushed. A Japanese pull saw, all that pressure starts at the handle and ends at the tip. And so because of that, it does not need to be as thick and robust and be able to handle as much pressure as a western style blade. Meaning these are much thinner and more delicate, they're not delicate, but they're more delicate typically than a western style saw. And so what that means is, is if I use this as a, here I'm gonna use this for an example because it'll be easier to get my point across. This is a pull, Japanese pull cut saw. If I push this in to something and it gets caught, it's going to bend very, very easily, okay? And that's why you see a lot of silky saws with the tip broke off or they're bent in half. It's because people applied pressure on the push and it caught something and it did not handle it exactly the same as a western style saw would. Okay? Because it is thinner and more delicate, bad things happen. And so the advantage to a western style saw that cuts on the push is that it's going to be much more robust. It's going to be thicker, heavy duty. The disadvantage of a pull saw is it's thinner, more delicate, but the advantage of a pull saw is they are thinner, they're much more precise. You can cut exactly on the line and you're getting you're removing much less material. So because you're removing much less material, it's a lot easier to use. So not only is it more precise, it's way easier to use because a thick saw is going to remove a ton of material every single time you cut with it, where the Japanese style is removing much less material, making it a lot easier and a lot more precise. And so again, the advantage of a pull saw, thinner, lighter, a lot more delicate, easier to use. The advantage of a Western is it's bigger, heavier, more robust, can handle the elements. Uh, you can throw it in the back of your truck and you don't have to worry about it getting bent or anything bad happening to it. They're usually built to withstand a lot of pressure and a lot of abuse, okay? 
So in the comment section down below, I want to know, did you learn anything? What saw do you currently use? And what are you, do you, are you thinking about transferring over to a Japanese saw or a Western style saw? Do you need something that's more robust? Do you need something that's a little bit easier to use? Let me know in that comment section. I'm really excited about the conversation. This one's going to start and I can't wait to see you in my next video.